Hello guys, and um, welcome to my personal channel. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Bilgewater, and like the general geography and culture lore-wise around it. So yeah, so Bilgewater is the pirate nation of League of Legends. Theoretically, it's similar in concept to like something like Tortuga from Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. And Bilgewater is a nation where the law quite literally just does not exist, with thieves, gangs, ghosts, and even just creatures from the ocean running amok all over. But, despite that, it is a sanctuary for people who need new opportunities, for those who can survive, or possibly even better, thrive in the brotherhood of scoundrels that have come together to form the Bilgewater um, nation. Uh, in this video, which is going to be part one of the multi-part series in which we cover the lore behind Bilgewater, um, we're just going to talk about, like, as I said, the culture and geography around it. Uh, next video is the one where we'll talk about important people and as well as the champions from Bilgewater. So yeah, let's, let us begin with like the area. So Bilgewater, as I said earlier, is an island nation. It lies on the Serpent Isles, also known as the Blue Flame Isles, which are an archipelago, meaning group of islands, so you can think like Hawaii, that lie off of the southern coast of Valorant, southeastern coast of Valorant, sorry. So like if you were looking on a map, it'd be in the bottom right. Uh, and yeah, Valorant, for those of you that don't know, is the main continent of the League of Legends world, so it's like to the southeast of that. Uh, the indigenous people and their religion are highly respected in Bilgewater, because it is claimed that nobody has a better knowledge of the ocean and the sea monsters that lie in the ocean's depths. And it is also said that no ship can navigate the perilous straits around Bilgewater without the help of a native. So because of those two facts, people of indigenous descent are held in high regard in Bilgewater. Um, and then people who are non-indigenous are called by people of indigenous descent, Peilangi. So like, just citizens of Bilgewater that aren't indigenous are Peilangi. And then another important role that the indigenous life has like played on Bilgewater, mostly like influenced Bilgewater with, is the religion. Because the main deity worshipped in Bilgewater is the bearded lady, also known as Nagake Buros, or the mother serpent. People often pay tribute to her by throwing coin or rum into the ocean or other like givings, offerings into the ocean when they leave port or arrive in Bilgewater. Uh, she's the goddess of motion, sky, and the sea, and many people believe her to lie in the depths of the ocean, but Alawi, who is like the truth bearer and leading priestess in the religion, claims that she does not live in the ocean or in the sky, but rather in people's hearts. So more about the religion, Alawi as the truth bearer is sent to test people, you know, extremely similar in that of her gameplay. You can read more about it in the short story The Burden. She just pulls your soul out and you have to um, like survive Nagake Buros' judgment. Uh, also, in the short story Shadow and Fortune, Alawi performs a ritual in which uh, Nagake Buros directly intervenes to stop the harrowing because she does not like undeath. Um, we can eventually go over harrowing lore and the Shadow Isles for like Halloween or if there's an event around it, but for now the basics that you want to know about it as it relates to Bilgewater is that the Harrowing is an event in which Black Mist from the Shadow Isles is ushered in and it's really important to Bilgewater because Bilgewater is really close to the Shadow Isles. It's the most immediate, immediate area they can attack. So yeah, so the Black Mist is ushered into Bilgewater by Hecarim, Mordekaiser, and Thresh, and the denizens of Bilgewater must fight back against ghosts as well as those three, um, those three leaders. So, yeah. So, other important parts of the Serpent Isles that aren't Bilgewater are the Isle Buru, where Alawi's religion originates from, and it's also where a Hierophant, in her short story The Burden, told them to flee to avoid the harrowing. So, because it's where their religion originates from, either like Nagake Burus will protect them there, or it's just out of the reach of the Black Mist for whatever reason. So it's probably more likely that Nagake Burus will just protect them. 
And then there's also the Serpentine River, where Twisted Fate and his people hail from. They're called like river people. And it's also where Tom Kench frequently preys on foolish humans. Um, so that should about do it for like the geography as well as like indigenous culture. So now we're gonna move on to like the aspects of the nation itself. So Bilgewater, as I've pretty much said and should be obvious, is pretty much like a pirate port. It's like a nation. It's more like a city in a way with like a ton of smaller districts inside of it, but it's called a nation, so we're gonna call it a nation. And people there can either like make their living two ways. Like they can either like hunt sea monsters or they resort to crime to earn like their fame and their fortune. So more often than not, lying, cheating, and stealing is the way people fight for their way to the top. Like rarely people ever fish or do honest work in Bilgewater. Uh, murder especially is really commonplace, especially after Gangplank's death. In the short story Shadow and Fortune, which is the one with the harrowing, there, it is claimed that 17 murdered gangsters was a slow night by the standards of Bilgewater. 17 is a slow night, so that seems pretty pretty interesting. Um, and then also Ill illegal dealings of things, such as weapons and drugs, are also standard practice in Bilgewater. Because we can see in Miss Fortune's short story, uh, when she hunted a man named Zyglos, he was trying to sell her an illegal Hextech carbine from Piltover. And then also because of the large amounts of like murder and gambling and cheating that goes on, people who are too weak to like kill themselves can hire people to be killed. That's where like bounty hunters like Misfortune come into play. Um, so yeah. So like the culture is pretty much just lie, murder, cheat, steal, pirate your way to the top in Bilgewater. So and key geographical landmarks inside of the nation slash city itself include Butcher's Bridge, which is the ARAM replacement map, replacement map in like the event that launched yesterday, as well as in like the one a long time ago before it. And it serves to connect the slaughter docks, which is one of Bilgewater's more important areas that we'll talk about later, uh, to the slums, as well as it leads to the temple of Nagake Buros, so like the temple of the key religion there where Alawi stays. Um, the Grey Harbor used to be a port on the eastern side of Bilgewater but it was destroyed by Hecarim during one of the harrowings. Just stampled, trampled, stampeded by his horsemen. Port Morn suffered a similar fate to the Grey Harbor but it was wrecked by Mordekaiser instead of Hecarim. Smuggler's Cove is listed on the wiki as an area that, whose purpose was for stashing pirate goods, but has been abandoned since the harrowing described in Shadow and Fortune, which is the one where Nagake Buro saved Bilgewater. And then also not mentioned in the wiki, but in that same short story, is a location called Cutpurse Square, which is supposedly a bustling marketplace that can be seen from every corner of Bilgewater, according to Misfortune. The slaughter docks are also a major part of Bilgewater life, as it is where gangs slash crews, you know, people, especially like during Gangplank's era, people that worked under Gangplank would um, participate in this, is that they would go out and hunt sea monsters every night and return to butcher them and sell like parts of them for wares or for food uh, in the slaughter docks. So it is said that the water itself is stained red from the constant blood of these sea monsters and then it is also seen that sharks and other carnivorous fish are drawn to the docks because of it. So the slaughter docks also lie beneath Butcher's Bridge, um, inside of Rat Town. So Rat Town is the largest settlement inside of Bilgewater, where major events normally take place, especially because it's the docking area for Gangplank's ship, the Deadpool, as well as Misfortune's ship, the Siren, and it is where Gangplank died when he was trying to execute, um, Gangplank, or uh, sorry, Graves and Twisted Fate. Uh, and lastly, important is the White Wharf, which is named that because it is li literally covered in stained white with bird poop. And it's pretty much seems like just a graveyard with many bodies and grave buoys just floating in the water. Uh, as far as important creatures I want to mention that relate to build water, the only one I can think of is the Rift Scuttler, so like the river thing that gives us vision and a speed shrine comes from Bilgewater. And that should about do it for, uh, 
for Bilgewater's lore. Um, tomorrow we're going to talk about Pike and his origins, including some interesting speculation that I might have found, as well as other champions like Gangplank, Misfortune, Twisted Fate, Graves, Fizz, champions that are directly related to um, Bilgewater lore, those that are not directly related to Bilgewater lore but have participated in anything like Olaf, as well as like stuff, a little bit of more of the Shadow Isles and how they relate to Bilgewater. But yeah, so that should about do it for this time. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and uh, peace.